This was the great watchtower of Amun Sur. We shall rest here tonight. Hey guys, welcome back to Not One Videos. Today I'm doing a project that I'm extremely excited about because I've been wanting to do it for a while. Recently I contacted one of my favourite YouTube channels called History of the Ages, formerly known as History of Middle Earth. Uh, they do videos all about the lore surrounding the world of Middle Earth, so Silmarillion, all of the exhaustive texts of Tolkien and stuff, and it's extremely engrossing watching, especially if you're a fan of uh, Middle Earth like me. And I contact them because they do tabletop gaming as well. Um, especially Lord of the Rings themed uh, tabletop gaming. So I contacted them and I asked them, could I build them some terrain? And Jake and James replied and said they would love some terrain. So I am going to build them Amon Sul on top of Weathertop. So it is located in Eridor, sort of region of Middle Earth. And this is a location in the movies, if you're familiar with it, where Frodo gets stabbed by the Morgul blade by one of the Black Riders. I think he gets stabbed by the Witch King of Agmar, if I'm not mistaken. This is what I'm going to build for these guys. It's going to require a bit of thought and yeah, I'm going to get started tonight. So here we go. Okay, let's get started. I decided to do a little bit of a drawing before this project so that I had a bit of visual reference. I didn't want to just fall into completely copying uh, the movie or wet workshops. I wanted to kind of do my own thing. Of course mine is going to be influenced by those, those images and all of the images of Steve Howe and Alan Lee from over the years, but I want to do my own thing at the same time. I am planning to make the playable central part of the area, the cobblestone courtyard, 8 inches wide, so it has to give 40 feet of uh, movement for 1 inch per 5 feet of movement. So, yep, this plate is about a millimeter or two over eight inches. It's, it's perfect, really. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna start to carve up some XPS foam. Uh, my plan is to cut a hole in the center, place another piece of XPS foam in the bottom, and then create some stairs as well. Uh, and we're going to find out if this works. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you will see that uh, there's a very common thread running through my YouTube channel and that is carving XPS foam with my wood whittling knife. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description below if anyone's interested in getting one of these little knives. So whenever I'm carving or doing something a bit tedious like this, um, I mean I do enjoy it but at the same time I love listening to podcasts and one of the best discoveries that I've had has been History of the Ages. I'm often sitting, just listening to those guys go over some of the lore of Middle Earth. It's great. Okay, so for those of you who are not aware of what this is, Tolkien Media Day is an annual event launched by the Tolkien Society in 2003. And that takes place on the 25th of March every single year. Its aim is of encouraging readers of the works of J.R.R. Tolkien and the use of Tolkien's works in education and the life of groups. And if you want to hear any more of that, you're going to have to tune in to History of the Ages, uh, where you can hear lots of lore, you can hear dramatic readings from the texts, etc. It's really cool stuff. Anyway, back to this build. I'm carving these steps, and this is the one area where I think a carving knife beats the proxon, because I can't see how you would carve these steps with a hot wire cutter or a proxon. So yeah, this knife is extremely handy for a job like this where you can get into weird, awkward angles. Uh, my stairs, um, they're a bit crooked and worn, which is fine because this is going to be worn down ruins and that's going to suit it no problem. Um, I've got a circle for the base, which is going to go underneath. I've got to glue this and then we'll move on. 
keep your glue gun at a lower temperature so that you don't melt your XPS foam. That is the main base kind of started and done and now I need to figure out what's going to go on with pillars, I need to figure out statues. I do have a little statue design already which I practiced the other evening. These little statues are going to go in. These little statues are going to go around standing one, two, three, four and five. So that's what we're roughly working with. Uh, we're going to have five pillars, then we're going to have broken down walls, we're going to have some steps, we're going to have all sorts of different things going on in here. But it is going to be pieced together, one piece at a time. My XPS foam is 20 millimeters thick, so I am going to judge it that a wall is two bricks deep and a brick is going to be 10 millimeters thick. So these are quite thick walls. This offcut is almost the perfect shape already. It's going to be one of the overhangs. So yeah, I'm just going to carve this up so that it fits in over the steps and yeah, we'll see how we get on from there. The downside of building these ruins freehand is that I have to measure and carve each individual piece to fit. This obviously takes time, but the upside is that I feel that it adds to the authentic look of the ruins. So yeah, I need five of these. Do not take me for some conjurer of cheap tricks. Okay, I have got my five pieces and they both, they've all been individually shaped to fit the stair parts and I'm going to break down each one in various ways, make them look like ruins. If you're new to crafting and you want to start making stuff and you're wondering what this is, this is XPS foam. It's basically underfloor insulation and you can get it from heating stores in the UK. I'll put a link in the description below so that you can get some. It's the brickwork for all five corner bits done. The best thing about XPS foam is that it's sturdy but you can also put marks and dents in it very easily which you can see me doing right now with this tin foil. It basically adds a texture to it that makes it look like stonework. Um, a lot of crafters do this and it's a very very useful tip so try it out. So yeah, there we go, you can see the difference. Uh, old battered up wall, that one looks new. A minute ago that looked like an old wall, now that looks like an old wall. My corner walls have been bricked up and beat up, um, so now I'm going to do the step work and all of the brickwork surrounding this. I'm going to do cobblestone, it's going to make it look all cool. So I've kind of gone for this off-kilter kind of cobblestone effect in mine, and rather than using a one-inch grid kind of system, mostly because I like the look of it better, I think it looks more realistic. Uh, when it comes to gaming, you can measure the distance for your piece to move around the board. Um, it's just as easy, and I think, yeah, this looks better, it's more immersive. The central courtyard of Amun Sul is finished, and it's looking pretty awesome. Um, and before I go to bed, at 23 in the morning again I am going to glue these pieces in now I am going to break them down after they're glued in because uh, I want to see how it all sits together so I'm just going to glue these bits in and then that'll be me for today Crafting is literally the most addictive hobby I've ever had. I absolutely love it. I get lost in it and hours go by in the blink of an eye. I often find myself at two or three o'clock in the morning going, uh, but I've just got started and yeah, I'm often exhausted, but it is worth it. This is starting to look pretty good. I'm going to put it to one side for now and focus on something else. So in the movies and a lot of the uh, artwork, uh, Alan Lee and different things like that, when it comes to Amon So, it had these standing statues of these bearded hooded men. So yeah, I've carved this from XPS foam. Originally I had planned for this footage to kind of be like a tutorial for you guys on how to carve these little statues, but this video was going to be extremely long if I had done that and also my cuts in this one weren't particularly methodical so if you'd like to see a video on this I will make a video tutorial on this. Also to mention that the swords that I make I got from RP Archive so go and check those out and um, he has a great video on how to make little weapons rack um, from a comb so that's very cool. So there you go I've got four now 
these little guys. I'm only going to do two of these statues with swords, which is that that's them both done. Uh, the, the rest are going to be in various forms of disrepair within the piece. Okay, back to this bit now. Uh, a lot of these, these are overhanging too, too much and they're currently probably a bit too tall. So yeah, I'm going to break some of them. But you can see how breaking bits is automatically starting to make this more like, look more like ruins. It does feel a bit weird sometimes after having put some time and effort into building something to go ahead and start breaking it down. But when it comes to ruins, there's only one way to make something look ruined and that is to ruin it. The cool thing is that it's very hard to ruin your ruins by them being too ruined. The downside is that once you've broken it all up, uh, you have to glue it back on again and yeah. That takes time. So that is so much better, having broken that all down a little bit. But I'm gonna go ahead and glue all of those into place, and then I'll come back. Okay, so things are definitely starting to look a little bit more like how I imagine Ammon Soul weather top. And yeah, really starting to get quite happy with this. So next part, I'm going to put the statues in. This one's the, le the, the least broken down, so we definitely need a statue in here. But I think they need square bases. I'm very proud of these little statues. Uh, they turned out so much better than how I thought whenever I first came up with the idea. I love being able to tie my hobbies together and I love carving and carving for terrain builds is even better. Ah, that is so cool! At this stage in a build, you're starting to add details and you can really start to see uh, what you've had in your imagination come to life in front of you. And it's an extremely satisfying feeling. Uh, you kind of know that you're going to get there, but you've still got lots of work to do. That is all my broken down statues in place. Uh, this one... Is obviously not as beat up and stuff but that's cool I think to have varying forms of disrepair this one's completely broken up and collapsed uh, this one is partially broken broken in half and then two that remain intact and I think that's quite a nice balance for the piece okay this is where a proxon hot wire cutter would have come in extremely handy uh, it cuts these sorts of shapes extremely extremely well and i wish i had one maybe santa will bring me one for christmas but i doubt it i built my pillars and we're going to put them into the project in a minute but before i want to do that i need to build some other things in the project one of the things that i want to build is to have an old broken down staircase and i'm going to build it on this side uh, just because there's a nice little area here where i think it would fit quite nicely we are drawing close to the end of the ruins section now and we'll be moving on to the terrain very soon thanks so much guys for sticking with me this far i know you've been watching a lot of carving xps foam I probably could have just left the ruins as they stand and they would have been passable but adding these arches and stairs I think really helps. That's all glued in and looking pretty cool. Um, I may, I'm still going to break down more bits off it. I'm just putting it in place for now so that it look, looks good. Starting to look seriously sweet now. Yeah, very happy with this. Focus over here. So I think this build kind of shows off what you can do with very basic techniques. Uh, most of what I've done is carve lines and just break up XPS foam and stick it down. And none of these shapes are too difficult to carve and if you've got a bit of imagination you can put something together like this very very easily and it's effective. Yep, that's that done. Hello, okay so I'm going to be doing um, the terrain, starting to build the terrain now, even before I finish my piece because 
I want the terrain to fit in nicely underneath before I cut these edges off and stuff. Uh, I've got a big piece of card and I'm going to do a process that I've never done before um, but I've seen it done uh, by other people with smaller bits of terrain using expanding foam. So I'm pretty sure it's going to work, I just probably have to build it up in layers. So first I'm going to just draw a more natural shaped piece of backing which I'm using cardboard and to try and prevent um, curving of the edges I'm going to be taping it to my table with this that will pre prevent the curve. So this is going to be a time lapse and yeah let's, let's get it done. For me personally this was probably the most fun part of the whole entire build. Uh, I've always wanted to squirt an entire bottle of this expanding foam out to see what would happen and yeah what a great opportunity. It is extremely sticky stuff though so be careful I ruined my trousers. <laughs> Cool, I've used two bottles and that's going to be enough. Right, I have a sneaky suspicion that that's going to take quite a while to cure. The first level took about an hour to cure. I've thickened this one up and still got a bit of expanding to do. It's all hardened up and I'm really, really happy with it. The parts with uh, where I put, well, the part where I put a bit of wood uh, for is extremely solid. Uh, this bigger, thicker part, um, it's got an ever so slight spongy quality to it, but I wonder if that is because maybe right at the center it's still curing. It's quite a lot of foam to cure, but generally it's hard and it's extremely lightweight. You know, this is not heavy terrain. Uh, durability, uh, well, I mean, I've used foam whenever I've worked in decorating and stuff and construction business and stuff like that there, like doing things for people's, like filling gaps between walls and different things like that. It's quite structurally sound and durable. Uh, so I think this is pretty good. Okay, so there we go, we've got some confirmation. The reason why this top part is spongy is because it is still curing on the inside. I can see that it's still curing on the inside, so I'm gonna to have to come back and do the cutting. I'm gonna to have to leave it for another hour or two, I think. Uh, but that's actually a good sign because that tells me that when it's cured in there, the spongy, um, slight sponginess here is going to go away because it's, it's gonna be solid like the rest of this. Okay, so it probably took about four hours for the foam to cure and solidify the whole way through, but I just left it overnight to be safe. And yeah, it was ready to carve the next day. It is super easy to carve this stuff. Um, I used my carving knife, but you could probably just use a kitchen knife. So once you've carved off the crust, there will be lots of little holes where the bubbles um, have formed. So you're gonna need to fill those, uh, unless you like a bubbly rock texture, but I filled them with crack and shrink resistant polyfill. We're making a lot of progress with this piece. Um, all of the, the crust on it is now hard and ready to paint. So I wanna start to glue some textures onto the terrain, sort of stones and different things like that. So bits of bark here and there for rock protrusions. And then it'll be a black Mod Podge coat and then it'll be onto flocking and painting itself. This is a technique that I use on pretty much every single one of my terrain builds. I go out to the park and I get some bark and I put it in the blender. Um, once I've got my bark ready, I cover the whole piece in PVA glue, sometimes watered down PVA glue, but here I just use straight PVA glue, and then I just sprinkle it all over the project. It's a very effective flocking. I have covered the whole thing in varied sized bark chipping flock, right down to the finest grain. Um, up to a little bit bigger but that a lot of that's going to fall back off um, I've just covered it and whatever falls off falls off. I'm finally getting on to part of the project that I'm super excited about and that's the paint job obviously starting with black Mod Podge and building up my layers of dry brushing etc and uh, most of the ruins are going to be 
stonework, so I'll just be building up the stonework dry brushing that I usually do on some of my other pieces, as you'll see in my other videos. And then I'm going to add some vines and foliage to make it look overgrown, and I might add more flocking and stuff, but I want it to look really blended into an environment. So, anyway, I'm going to carry on watching the making of The Lord of the Rings and, and as a get painting. Black paint mixed with Mod Podge once again, the classic trick. Everybody does this, but uh, it's very effective for a really good, strong base coat. Okay, then it's time to start building up your colours. Uh, for my stonework, I start with graphite grey, as you can see in the top left, and then neutral grey, and then I mix my neutral grey with titanium white. I then move on to burnt umber to get all of those muddy textures, and then I mix my own green from cadmium yellow and cobalt blue, and then it is just a lime green for the highlights. Once all the paint is dry, it's time to move on to your flocking, and that requires uh, some PVA glue watered down all over the project where you want your grass. I used some bought grass this time. Normally, I would have made it myself, but I cut some corners because time. So yeah, I'm gonna let that dry and then blow it off with a hairdryer and then move it off to the side, but it's looking kind of cool. Okay, so these ruins are looking really good and stony, but looking a bit unnatural because there's no growth or anything on them. So we're going to put in some flocking, um, maybe a bit of burnt umber paint in around some of these more rocky, broken down rock areas to make it look muddy and worn out as well. Um, some grass on top of the ruins in different areas, flocking, that sort of thing. So that's what we're going to do now. Something as simple as adding uh, some grass flocking and some clump foliage to a project basically takes a piece of stonework and travels it back in time and makes it look ancient. This overgrown effect on these ruins just lifts the whole project to another level and I'm really really happy with how it turned out. And this is actual vines um, but they're dead and they're, they're, they're reasonably structurally okay but they're probably a bit too flimsy as they stand. So I'm going to put black Mod Podge and burnt umber paint on some of this. I love being able to use uh, bits and pieces that I've picked up from the park or stuff that I've picked from the garden. Um, I was also going to use those little ivy fronds but I decided against it. There we go. Some brown vines that are going to go into the ruins. So I'm going to get some super glue. And yeah, we're going to just stick in these vines. All the vines are glued in. And they're looking pretty sweet. I really, I really like them. Just little bits of foliage here and there. Some vines just to make it look old and grown over. Okay, that is the end of the build and now for the montage. And I just want to say that this is my dad reading The Lord of the Rings over the top of my montage. Thanks, dad. He slowly drew out the chain and slipped the ring on the forefinger of his left hand. Immediately, though everything else remained as before, dim and dark, the shapes became terribly clear. He was able to see beneath their black wrappings. There were five tall figures, two standing on the lip of the dell, three advancing. In their white faces burned keen and merciless eyes. Under their mantles were long grey robes. Upon their grey hairs were helms of silver. In their haggard hands were swords of steel. Their eyes fell on him and pierced him as they rushed towards him. Desperate he drew his own sword, and it seemed to him that it flickered red as if it was a firebrand. Two of the figures halted. The third was taller than the others. His hair was long and gleaming, and on his helm was a crown. In one hand he held a long sword, in the other a knife. Both the knife and the hand that held it glowed with a pale light. He sprang forward and bore down on Frodo. At that moment Frodo threw himself forward on the ground, and he heard himself crying aloud, O oh, Elbereth, Gilthoniel! At the same time he struck at the feet of his enemy. A shrill cry rang out in the night, 
and he felt a pain like a dart of poisoned ice pierce his left shoulder. Even as he swooned, he caught, as through a swirling mist, a glimpse of Strider leaping out of the darkness with a flaming brand of wood in either hand. With a last effort, Frodo, dropping his sword, slipped the ring from his finger and closed his right hand tight upon it. There we go, guys. This is the finished product. This is my interpretation of Weathertop Amon Sul from The Lord of the Rings. I have not enjoyed myself on building something like I've enjoyed this for a very, very long time. Uh, it became like an obsession for the last three or four weeks and I've loved every minute of it. Um, I'm actually kind of sad that it's over now, um, but I'm very much looking forward to packaging this up and sending it off to Jake and James over at History of the Ages. Thank you so much, Jake and James, for yeah, being up for the project, for being up for the idea. And if you guys want to learn about the significance of Amon Sul, head over to History of the Ages where Jake and James have Jake and James have done a video on yeah the lore and the significance behind Amon Sul within Middle Earth and that part of Middle Earth. Which will be really interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing that video. Also, just give them a subscription and yeah, check out their other stuff, especially if you're a fan of Lord of the Rings or Middle Earth, you're going to love their channel. Um, I'm obsessed with it. I watch every video that comes out. So yeah, thank you so much guys for tuning in and watching the build. I hope you enjoyed the build. Please like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, just push that little red button for me. Um, yeah, it means a lot to me and it helps me get focused and make more things. Last thing is, if you have any ideas of cool things that I could build from pop culture or, you know, especially fantasy related pop culture, um, yeah, please let me know in the comments below because I'm looking for ideas of things that people would like to see, but that also that I would enjoy to build. So, yeah, hopefully see you guys next time and yeah, go and check out History of the Ages. Thanks a lot guys. Bye.